again? Yeah. Yeah. Was it you that held it the whole time? It was Matt. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Can you get yeah. it? It's all, all right. in here. All right. Are we on video? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you oh. want your face in it, though? No. Okay, then this is perfect. Are we recording? We are recording. Oh, okay. Are we, are we good? <laughs> like, are I we think good? we're good. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the D4 YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, you're a heathen. Uh-uh. I love the D4 YouTube channel. This is the D4 YouTube are we channel. Doing what we did? So, tell me what I'm drawing, Elena. You are drawing the Define Lines that you see Yeah, and you're not doing Shaggy uh -oh. Dog. Yeah. yeah. I'll just stand back. You need the peanut gallery to be quiet. That's what Alex says. Do you want me to keep talking? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm also the peanut gallery. Um, yeah, you're drawing the defined lines that you see, creating shapes. And not doing shaggy dog. Straight lines following through. Except when you're making some trees, I believe. There's the extended lines. You saw them. Lots of the, what are they called? What are they called? Construction lines. The forms. Lines. Both following the lines that you see through the trees and uh, creating your own. Just going with it. Darkening up the lines that you want to be. Uh, you some scale. Yep, this is good. Okay, so now what I'm ready to do that I have this down is to start figuring out what like the structural system would be. Do you guys see how this piece is kind of floating over here? Right, so it feels like there's a piece of structure that's going through here. There's structure that's here. There's a really large cantilever and Roberto has taught you guys about cantilevers, right? So cantilevers can go about one third the distance of their overhang. So this structural line starts to become really, really significant to hold this. I've got this kind of volume that's here. So above this, I'm gonna actually start drawing a plan, which is that I have a really large space. So I'm gonna do, like Elena said, I'm gonna allow my construction lines to kind of continue. I'm gonna allow, right, so let's see. we'll start label. I'm gonna I'm gonna label things in this drawing so it's clear for you guys what I'm what's what. So I'm gonna say that this is A. This is B. C is here. Alright, and we're kind of starting to draw stuff out. We're just gonna keep running into pieces. It's all good. All right, so I'm gonna put in my site topography. Now, since we've used square-ish blocks, and this is where it came in, Kayla, you started out with batting too many pieces, and I was like, less pieces, less pieces. Do you see how the more pieces you have, the more you have to draw, the more confusing it gets? So if you have less pieces, you can be like, okay, I'm gonna focus on this you know, this piece, this square that's here. So this B space, this starts to feel like a large chapel space. And then, you know, we can annotate in here. We can say lifted, and then we can say that this is like a plaza, tower, question mark, staircase, question mark. It must be my precedent. Maybe this is an entrance. Tell me about your precedent. Well, it's just, Kind of like the top where it's A and B, it's only a square with the tower-like thing that starts to go towards, like up on the sky, and the cross is totally on that part. And so, all right, so you can even add some diagram to this that like the movement up the slope here becomes important. The movement out here. Just drawing this view from this arrow, starting to become important. So like that might need, that might be another drawing that we need to do to get us here from the view where this person is. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> right? That's a dog. Uh, all right, we can draw in. So now we have an idea of like a building mass 
Um, it looks like there needs to be auxiliary spaces over here. This is the main chapel space. Here is a large plaza space. It kind of walks its way down the landscape. And now, now we can do our structural diagram over top of this, okay? So here is a column line. Here is a column line. Column lines are dot dashes. They happen at regular intervals. Common column lines happen at 16 feet on center, 20 feet on center, 24 feet on center. Sometimes they might be 25 feet on center. So if I had a scale and I knew what I was drawing at a scale, I could start doing that. But as long as, and I'm going to draw proportionally because my experience, I kind of know how big this is. All right. So I'm going to move this over. Here's another column line. See how it's on a module. All right. And then we're going to do another column line over here. Another column line over here. Another column line over here. Now, if I'm gonna do this distance, check this out. You see how, uh, let's just call this X, okay? And X can equal any of these, all right? Let's say X equals that. This is X again. Does this look like three X? Right? Because column, columns are modular. Um, if I'm going to use the chapel and I don't want to have any, I don't want to have any columns in that space, I might still have a column here and here and here and here and here and here. But we can see like we might have another one now. Column lines can be different cent on centers in different directions. So you could do 24 feet on center, 20, so you could do 16 feet on center this way and 24 feet on center this way. So this could be Y, Y, okay? Y could be another one on here, okay? Now, I've got that column line opening up, that column opening up, this, this is an open space. And now I can start adding a skin might go on top of this. And since it's the chapel space, maybe I want that to be more open. So that might be a veneer. I was talking to somebody about bricks the other day. And we were saying bricks can be a veneer or they can be heavy masonry. So the wall starts to become thicker if it's made out of solid masonry. So I might start drawing the wall thickness that's on here. So immediately, we have moved today from site analysis to program analysis to starting to understand the massing that's on the site and how it's integrated into the site. And as soon as we've done that, because we have built what we've built has been in modules, we can start to get an idea of column lines. And at, if this building, let me go back with some dark line weights. If this building started to get kind of constructed. We could, we could nibble away at the edges. We could, you know, we can make cantilevers. We can go out and make things larger. But if, if we start to kind of figure out what this building is, these column lines could start to, uh, you know, organize other pieces of program that are out on the site as well. So this column line where there is no beam in this big central space, this column line could start to organize this building out here that has columns around it, right? And so if that's the chapel and this is the auxiliary spaces that maybe climb you up to, I don't know, maybe there's kind of an amazing view that's up here or maybe there's, I'm not sure. We could have another structure over here. This might be administration, bathrooms. It also starts to frame a landscape that's this direction. Maybe there starts to be a staircase that is here. That would be in line with this. This is a plan, yeah. So let's do this and we'll say plan at, uh, this feels like it's 16th scale. North. Right? That means that the sun is coming up here on June 21st. Uh, the sun is coming up down here 
actually way down here, way down here on December. The sun is setting over here. So maybe this means that I have an awesome view of the sunset. So maybe I end up having like louvers that catch the light. Anyway, we can start talking about maybe this needs to be a much more complex space to be in. But do you guys see how we're, by using squarish shapes, it also allows us, and this is why I made you guys do square-ish shapes, is because we can start doing column lines really easy. Because structures get really confusing when you make weird shapes. I'm not against weird shapes. We can absolutely introduce, you know, some kind of an angle to this. Rather, like, we can totally int start introducing, you know, angles into this and saying like, there's gonna be a sight wall here, you know, and maybe something happens along that sight wall and there's a retaining wall and there's a natural piece of topography that kind of links into that and then it kind of busts out again. We can do that. But the reason why I made the pieces squarish was just so that you guys could move more easily from site to program to structure so that we can get to the details of the architecture that you're building. So you guys see how we use the pictures to try to get an idea of the masses? And then kind of, you guys immediately today put those masses on site and now we're starting to get to something like this. Now, I have a little bit more experience than you guys. I knew we were gonna do this. So it might seem like it's happening very quickly. It might, you know, we have learned that it takes you guys time, right? But, so for homework, very clearly, we're gonna do another pass over top of these. We're not, we're not restarting, we're just adding a new layer on top of it. And we're adding the layer using the language that you guys said today, density, discovery, circulation, connection, collaboration, uh, interaction, audio, collage, all right? And we're doing that with site and program. And you can see that like already we have done, ooh, does anybody have a different color? Yeah. So see how this has created <coughs> Gazoon Height. We've got a Gazoon Height. We've got a view. We even have like through here, there's like kind of a little view too. We're starting to build another one that goes here. Starting to get one that's here, right? So we're starting to have those experiences of those views. This kind of comes up this way. We're starting to get some human circulation. And if you look at it here, right, like circulation up this hill. The other thing that's really helpful, so I'm drawing in perspective and plan. That's really hard to do. You guys have gone over analytics in history class where you're doing multiple things at multiple scales. It might be easier for you to do section and plan rather than perspective and plan. The other thing that I had you guys do today was to not work in um, where you were taking a picture of the entire building, but pieces of the building. And so what you might have, what you might have is pieces of plan rather than an entire plan, all right? And that's okay, because we can take those pieces of plan that are really important and we can figure out next week how to start fitting them together. All right, minimum of three photographs, maximum, I'm actually gonna turn it down, maximum of five. Too many pieces, you're gonna spread yourself too thin, all right? So I would much rather that you had plenty of information. Look at all the line weights here, construction lines, different line types. If you wanna do a diagram over this, maybe another piece of trace paper. If you're more comfortable operating in the computer, go ahead into, go ahead into the computer. If your best case scenario, we'll bit both, because these images look really good when you start to adjust them and, and videotape them, okay? So the assignment is to take the minimum of three, maximum of five images. You guys are gonna put all of your images up on Miro, not all, sorry, you're gonna curate your images up onto Miro so that your friends can grab what they need. Minimum of three, maximum of five, and then a series of studies where you do, where you fill in the drawing with the, the detail and the information and the scale people and then you, you evoke a plan from it with construction lines, good line weights, column lines, which is the dot dash, and those column lines should be at these on centers. Um, very rarely, we will have 12 feet on center, which is basically a hallway, so, all right? And if you wanna know how all this stuff works out, ask Jessica Oberg what she is doing in design eight right now and we are doing basically the second year version of what they are doing in Revit, where they are starting to kind of fully program the building. We're not gonna to get to that level of detail, but 
understanding how program site and structure are coming together is where we're at. That is your homework over the weekend. You just got a call. Okay, you can stop recording.